Hi everyone. In this class, I'll be taking you through some progressions for the transitions out of Utkatasana and Virabhadrasana. Okay, so the first thing we want to understand is how to protract and retract the shoulder blades. So I'll just show you uh, from the side a good way to practice that. So if we bring the hands out in front and move your shoulders forward, that's protraction. And if you pull your shoulder blades together, that's retraction. Try to do this with your elbows straight. So protraction and retraction. Forward and back. Okay, then we have the thoracic spine moving into extension and flexion. So this is flexion of the thoracic spine and flexion. Okay, flexion. Uh, sorry, extension and flexion. Okay, if we bring the arms up, then we try to do the same thing. So extension and flexion. Extension and flexion. And then if we look at the pelvis, we have anterior pelvic tilt and posterior pelvic tilt. Okay, so anterior pelvic tilt and posterior pelvic tilt. Okay, so now we try to do the same thing in a quadruped position. So bring your knees under your hips and your hands under your shoulders. And so let's look at protraction, retraction in this position. So protraction would be pushing down into the floor, shoulder blade spreading apart, and retraction is to try to pull the shoulder blades together. So your chest will move down, but in a moment I'll show you the difference between that and thoracic extension. So this is protraction, retraction, protraction, and retraction. All the time we keep the shoulders depressed, so we pull the shoulders toward the hips. Okay, so now the next part is the thoracic spine, and it's a subtle difference, but it's important to understand. So keeping the shoulders in protraction, we now round the upper back into flexion, and then move the thoracic spine into extension, which is only a small movement, but it's different from pulling the shoulder blades together. Okay, so set the shoulders again, and flex, and extend. Flex, and extend, and then come back to neutral, and then we'll look at the pelvis, so anterior pelvic tilt, and posterior pelvic tilt. Okay, just isolating the movement in the pelvis, so as you tuck under, not also moving the upper back. So just isolating the pelvis. Also when you tilt the pelvis forward, don't let the rest of the spine move. And then come back to neutral. And then lift your knees off the floor and we'll run through that in this position, which automatically you'll feel is much harder and automatically engages your core and you really have to engage the shoulders. So pull the shoulders to the hips, push down, and then let's go to retraction, shoulder blades together, protraction, push the shoulder blades apart. Retraction, protraction, then thoracic flexion, rounding the upper back, and then extending the upper back. So flexion and extension, and come back to neutral, and then anterior pelvic tilt, and posterior pelvic tilt. And then setting down. Okay, so it's a good way to understand what you need to do for Chaturanga Dandasana. So to prepare for Chaturanga, I want you to more or less be in the same position, but just take your knees a little further back. So then you're going to open your hips towards the floor without collapsing the lower back. So we open the hips to the floor and then create a slight posterior pelvic tilt. Before you lower down, create an external rotation. Okay, so I'll show you from the front. So before you go down, turn your biceps forward. Okay, you can think about rotating your hands away from each other. Okay. So create an external rotation, slight posterior pelvic tilt, shoulders down. As you lower to Chaturanga, don't let your shoulders go past the elbows. 
and then come back up. Okay, so this is a modification. If this is easy, or you can do this with good form, then progress to lifting the knees up, straighten the legs, slight posterior pelvic tilt, external rotation, pull the shoulders toward the hips as you lower down. Okay, so assuming you can do that, you can, uh, for the, the rest of the progressions, either just go straight to Chaturanga with the leg straight or choose the kneeling variation. Okay, so we're going to come to uh, Lolasana preparation. So come onto the balls of the feet, bring your hands out in front. Again, we want to create this external rotation. If you want to, you can turn your hands out a little bit. So we turn the biceps out and lean forward, pull the shoulders toward the hips. Also, you can press up between the shoulder blades. Okay, so we have that protraction plus the flexion of the upper back, keeping the knees tight into the chest. So lean forward till your shoulders go over the fingertips. You can also, you can see I'm using my fingertips to grip the floor. This will give, bring more strength to the wrist and help to stabilize and protect the wrist. You come forward. If you can, try to lift the feet off the floor. And then come back. Okay, so the next stage from here is to try to bend the elbows a little bit. So depress, protract, flex around the upper back, knees in, lean forward, and then start to bend the elbows a little, a bit like Chaturanga, and then straighten, and come back. Okay, so then from there, we're going to do that same sequence and slide back to Chaturanga. So I'll show you. So we go to straight arms, Lolasana, bent arms, Lolasana, and then slide back to Chaturanga. Okay, once you've mastered that, then you can add in a little hop. Okay, so straight arms, lolasana, bent arms, lolasana, and then hop. Going back to chaturanga. If you can, try to do the whole sequence without the feet on the floor. Okay, so lolasana, feet off the floor, bend the elbows, and jump back. Okay, and then if you want to get more uh, fancy, you can try to lift a little higher. Okay, so straight arms, lolasana, bent arms. And go back. Okay, so uh, as I was explaining in the workshop that I taught here, uh, when I started, uh, this was not the way we did it. Uh, it was not until we saw Sharat's videos that we saw that he was doing this kind of bent arm variation. So when I started, it was done more of like a tuck to a handstand. So I'll show you what that looked like. So from here, we used to jump up like this. To tuck position. and then jump back. Okay, so getting that tuck is uh, another tutorial. In the, you can use the wall as a way to do that. Um, is it, should I do it? Okay, so I can do it. I've been given the green light. So to practice your tuck, you can use the wall. Come close to the wall, basically what you can do is practice just kicking up to the wall and then bending the knees until your hips touch the wall and you come into your tuck. Touch your toe tips to the wall and then lift the hips off the wall. And so then you're just balancing, playing with the wall and then eventually just feeling the weight shift so you can balance without touching.
Okay, so just so you know where all this fits into the picture, so in the primary series we have this Utkatasana sequence coming from downward facing dog, inhale jumping forward, bending the knees, coming to Utkatasana, which we hold for five breaths, and then the vinyasa is ashto, lift up. So at this point is where you would go straight arms, bent arms, and jump back. Or you would do the variation that's right for you. So you would hands to the floor, lean forward, bend the elbows, slide back, or lean forward, bend the elbows, and hop back. So whichever variation you're doing, or you would jump up to the tuck, handstand, and then float back. Okay, so then the next uh, variation, which kind of continues with this theme, is the exit out of Virabhadrasana. So this uh, one you can actually start practicing in your sun salutation B. Um, so after, for example, you're coming out of Virabhadrasana, take the hands to the floor, then as you lower down, start going straight to Chaturanga. So single leg Chaturanga until you arrive in Chaturanga and touch that foot. Okay, so then that uh, the variation that I'm talking about from the warrior sequence. So after Virabhadrasana B, the standing sequence, the uh, vinyasa is Ekadasha up, Dwarasha Chaturari jump back. So we take the hands to the floor. So the first option would be simply to just do what I just showed. Lift up and lower down. Okay, so then option two would be you take the hands to the floor, bring this foot in a little bit, lift this leg up, bend the elbows, and slide back until you come to Chaturanga. Option three would be after Virabhadrasana, come to the floor, slide this foot back a little, then lift up here, and then you're going to do a little hop. Okay, which is a, it's a, a good option. Um, and then finally, you can try to lift that leg higher. So again, this kind of goes back to when I first started uh, in this uh, vinyasa, a lot of people would go up to a handstand and then come down. And I still see this done uh, a lot in a lot of different shalas. Um, so if you're doing this option, then try to control the movement rather than just flinging yourself up uncontrollably. Okay, so work on those progressions I just showed you. Once you've mastered those, then you can start working more towards the handstand option. And then floating down. Okay, so again, the being able to get to the handstand is uh, another tutorial. Okay, so <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, those are the options. So I'll just run through them again. So one is just to, oh yeah, as, as you come out of it, float this leg and come down. Two would be to lift this leg up and slide back. Of course, for that option, you need a, sl a slidey kind of a mat, okay? Or you can practice it with socks on, on the floor, okay? And then next option being lifting this leg and little hop. And then next option being making that hop a bit bigger until you come up to your handstand and up. Or it doesn't even need to be all the way to handstand, it can be somewhere in between, just so you can make it graceful. 
Okay, um, so all these options work a lot more kind of on the back of the body, the posterior chain. So you can see like as I lower down like this, it's kind of like the back is much more into more of a Shalabhasana position. Um, but the other variation works a lot more on the anterior chain. And this one uh, we saw Shot doing some videos uh, some years ago now and realized he was doing something quite different uh, from this. So the way he was doing it was he was actually lifting the front leg, okay? And then coming forward to a bent arm position. And jumping back like this. Uh, but this requires a lot of strength. So the progression I teach for that is what I'll show you now. So basically, after Virabhadrasana, you come to the floor, bring this foot in a little bit, even uh, turn the back foot. Then you're going to just lift this knee to the chest. So you're in a straight arm position, and go to a bent arm position, and just slide back to Chaturanga. Next option is same again, lift this knee to the chest, and this time you're going to do a little hop. So the, the back leg is going to bend, and you hop at the same time that you're bending the elbows going to Chaturanga. And then the, the last variation is the one I, was just, I showed you. It's more of a press. So lift the knee, lift the lean forward. As you lean forward, the back foot floats up, then the other leg joins it, and then you come down to Chaturanga. So, yeah, there's the, the variations. Make sure that you work step by step. Uh, yeah, there's no shortcuts in this practice, so you really need to get the foundation really solid and always work with the progression that's right for you, that you can then build upon that till eventually you can try the more advanced variations. Maybe, even if you can't, do the advanced variations just to do the more basic ones. You can see how hard I've just been working. Uh, so just doing the basics well is uh, gonna be really beneficial for you, for everybody. Thank you, hope you enjoyed.